There's a journey every believer must embark on. It's called the journey of intimacy. When you discover that life is not about what you can receive, but about who you have become, then you will embrace this journey. He said, as many as believed him, he didn't say he gave them anything. He said to them, he gave power to become. So you have to become before you celebrate what you carry. If you have not become, what you have is a lie. In the day of trouble, you will be shocked. The prophets of old knew this. And they spent all their lives pursuing intimacy. When you look for any man in scripture that was referenced, he was referenced because he stood somewhere with God. Elijah said, before God whom I stand. He was in the palace, but the palace was not a distraction. He knew he had something that was greater than the palace. He didn't come to the king cowering like Christians of today, hoping that the king will help them. He said, no. Even though I, it looks like I'm in your palace, he said, you don't know where I'm standing. I'm standing somewhere higher than your palace. And from where he stood, he said, for the next three and a half years, there will be no rain or dew in this land. The king with all his powers could do nothing about it. He thought the man was bluffing. One year passed. Two years passed. Three years passed. And they began to look for Elijah everywhere. He gave the king a new occupation. When Obadiah finally found him, he said, we have looked for you in every nation and in every city. The reason is because the guy was not on earth. He returned to Eden. We have looked for you everywhere. Where have you been? I'm in Eden. Because he was hid in God. They went to every city and every known territory. And to make things worse, even when he told Obadiah, go and tell the king I'm coming. Obadiah said, you, before I turn my back, he said, God will take you by the whirlwind. That means the guy knew Eden so much, he doesn't need a donkey to travel. When he wants to travel, the movement of the spirit like the wind carried him to where he was going. It was not something that happened once in a while. He lived in Eden so much, it became his natural medium of transportation. You can't teach that to the believers of today. Because we have been mentored to think that the supernatural life is impossible. So we have submitted and made up our mind to live the mundane life. But I came to tell you that if sons will rise, they must go back to Eden. You are not all you look like. There is something about you that even you have not found out. When you discover it, you will testify like the psalmist that you were terribly and wonderfully made. Because the dimensions of God are locked in your spirit. You must travel there in time to unlock it. Never return to eternity until you find out everything that was put on your inside and you walk in it on earth. Because for us who are born of God, our heavens don't begin when we die. While we are yet on earth, we walk in it as a reality. That's why Elijah didn't need to die. He understood this technology so much that he walked in it until even when he wanted to leave. It was the same way wind with which he traveled that he traveled to heaven. Who told you that Christianity is the animal life? Who told you that Christianity is the life of rules and regulations? How do you set rules for a God? How do you set principles for a God? You are an offspring of an invincible God. And you were created to live like him. The powers that created the earth dwells on your inside. How come you have been a Christian for 10 years and you have not found it? And you celebrate activity in church. You celebrate activities. You celebrate titles. Where is the God dimension that you carry? When the old prophets came out, they came out with dimensions. You knew them by dimensions. Moses was troubled. And he went to, to the wilderness for 40 days. 40 days. When Moses returned, the first thing that happened is that in Exodus 7 verse 1, he said, I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. The reason is because anybody who is living in Eden is living at a realm superior to the earth realm. So he becomes a ruler over the earth realm. God himself said, I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. Moses walked in these things until a point came. The Bible said the law of God became the law of Moses. In 2 Corinthians 3 verse 15, 
He said, when Moses is read. So when you are reading Exodus, you are reading Moses. It's just like a doctor. Tear your stomach and he's studying your anatomy. When you are studying numbers, you are reading Moses. Because Moses became like the laws that you read. He had tarried in glory until he became like that. He was so deep in this that Moses could not die. Did you read about Samuel? The Bible said in 1 Samuel chapter 7 verse 12, an army, the way Russia is invading Ukraine now, an army was invading Israel. Samuel didn't train soldiers. He said Samuel took a stone, planted the stone on the ground, poured oil on it and called it Ebenezer. And he said the moment Samuel invoked that technology, he said the hand of God was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel's life. He shot down an army by superior technology. What kind of being is that? A point came, the Bible said, the city where Samuel was living, he created the radar of the anointing called Nayot Rama. When Saul came to arrest Samuel, the moment he entered the boundary of that city, he fell down. He pulled his clothes and began to prophesy. That means Samuel doesn't need a great man. There is a technology of the radar anointing that Samuel created that secured the city. What kind of dimension do this man carry? They literally walked on the earth like gods among men. And they don't have the Holy Spirit. Israel went to war in Joshua chapter 10 verse 12. And they were fighting. And Joshua saw that when it was getting late, Israel was disadvantaged. And Joshua stood up and looked at the sun. And he said, let the sun remain upon the mountains of Ajalon. Let the moon remain upon the valleys of Gibeon. And he said, the earth, the sun, did not make haste to go down. He said, no day has been like that. And never will there be in the day that God hearkened to the voice of a man. If I'm greater than all of them in the Old Testament, it means I've not started living. Because you have not done one third of what they did. In Romans 15 verse 4, it said the things that were written at four times, they were written for your learning. So that you through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. In Matthew chapter 11 verse 11, Jesus said of all men that live before John, he said John was greater than all of them. Meanwhile, he said for you and I who are born again, he said the least of us is greater than John. How come your manifestation doesn't resemble any patriarch of old? Because you have violated the demands of intimacy. I can pray for you, you are healed now. That's the least thing you can receive. When you make up your mind and say, I will travel, I will journey with God, you will arrive at a point where you will never need any man to pray healing for you. I can give you a prophetic word now. It will help you for a season. But there is a realm you can travel to. And you will look at it from a superior dimension. You won't need anybody to give you a word of knowledge. When you come to church, you are coming to church because you want to enjoy fellowship. That's where God wants to take us to. Did you read about David? David operated in the seven dimensions of the anointing. David was a shepherd. David was a poet. David was a king. David was a warrior. David was a worshiper or a psalmist. David was called a father. How can one man function in so much power? A point came, David said, by my God, I ran through a troop. One man. Do you know what it will mean now if one person runs through the army of Russia and all their armored tanks shut down and when he stands on the other side, he turns back, he says, I am a Christian. These were the feet that these men were operating in, in the Old Testament. He said, by my God, I ran through a troop. He said, by my God, I leaped over a wall. He said, by my arm, I broke a bowl of steel. What kind of power is that? And he doesn't carry eternal life. Are you greater than Elijah? You are supposed to be. So if you are not, it means this life you are living is a lie. With the healing you received, with the prophecy for prosperity you received, 
all of that put together, this life you are living is a lie. Because the man you and I were told we were great, we are greater than. They conquered nations. They shot the mouth of lions. They quenched the violence of fire. They put to flight the armies of the alien. How come even headache today undermines our faith? How come the least challenge today throw us off balance? It means we have not traveled in God. Because Jesus said in John 17 verse 3, he said, this is life eternal. It's not oxygen. He said that you may know him. That you may experience him. That you may know him. The only true God. So if you are not living greater than all of these men, it means you don't know him. The problem is not whether you have the Holy Ghost or not. The problem is not whether you have eternal life or not. The problem is how much of him do you know? That's why Paul said that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering that I may be made conformable with him. Because Paul knew that in this life you can become like the God that you worship. That's why Paul said day and night we groan that we may take off this earthly garment. That we may take off the days where we pride ourselves because we have 100,000 followers are gone. How many sons are among them? How many men who can reveal God are among them? The day when we come on Facebook and say we have 200,000 followers so we have a big platform is gone. Because platform is not about how many people follow you. Platform is about the quality of witness you are generating for a generation. And how many are being changed on the strength of that witness. A man can have 10 followers and all of them are like gods. That man's platform is bigger than the man who has 300,000 followers but cannot raise one God among them. We prioritize in the wrong things. When Jesus came into this world, he sat down with 500 men. When he left this world, in fact, the night he was to leave, they could not identify which of them was Jesus Christ. Judas had to kiss him to show that he's this one because all of them had become like him. So you can't know which one is Jesus because anyone you touch can do what Jesus does. Judas had to kiss Jesus to show that this is the one we are talking about. If you go, you may catch Peter because these guys have become like the Messiah. And when Judas, who was the son of perdition, betrayed him, the Bible said they took one who went in and out with them from the baptism of John. That guy was never mentioned when Jesus was raising them. But because he was in that assembly, they just picked him and the same guy, Matthias, he had the same stature as the 11 disciples. So Jesus didn't come to raise crowd. He came to raise his kind. 